You're watching a movie and 20 minutes in, you realize there's not really a plot. This story isn't necessarily going anywhere, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to leave these characters or this place. Because at this point, it feels like you know them on a personal level and you want to just keep hanging out with them. The dialogue feels so much like real life, almost like you've had these same conversations. Maybe you've met people similar to this before, maybe you can see yourself or others you know in some of these characters, maybe you've had similar experiences, or you just wish you had lived in this time, place, and setting. For an hour and some change, this is where you are. Completely immersed, placing yourself with these characters, and just hanging out. My last two videos were, um, pretty dark to say the least. So I wanted to switch up the pace and talk about something a little lighter. Also, sorry for the wait since the last video, but I've just been battling a sickness, but we're all good now, so should be back to the regular schedule. But anyway, make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching, and come hang out with us while we talk about Hangout Movies. The term hangout movie is defined as a work of immersion and close study of a character ensemble where you get the feeling of familiarity, as if you and the people on screen are friends, enjoying the journey no matter where it takes you. And while I do agree with this definition, I feel like it insinuates that it's always a relaxing and chill experience. But when you focus on the aspect of character study, it can sometimes get pretty serious. And I believe that the best examples have a balance of the light and dark of it all. It feels more grounded in reality and what you would actually see through this fly on the wall lens. In the simplest terms, I would define hangout movies as a glimpse into life. There's no goal or mission to complete and if there are any, they don't really drive the events of the film. There's no real conflict or resolution. You just connect with the characters through their conversations, their personalities, and the setting. They might have motivations, but not ones that would take the story elsewhere. A perfect example is Jared Hess's 2004 cult classic Napoleon Dynamite. Yes, you could argue that the goal is to make Pedro the class president, but that isn't even brought up until halfway through the film. This movie is just about this world, focused on the perspective of our main character. His day to day, how he feels about his family and school, and the funny awkward moments he finds himself in. The movie is just a glimpse into his life. And now compare it to a similar high school comedy that you could argue is also under this umbrella, Superbad. But everything in the movie centers around a specific plot point, that they need to get laid before the end of the year. And even though it's pretty trivial, everything in the movie is about going from point A to point B. Because we aren't given a plot to follow, hangout movies rely on three key aspects to keep you engaged and tell a story. Setting, dialogue, and the characters. The conversations and personalities are what connect you to the film. The relatability, or by going off the definition, the familiarity of the characters. It's like you're in the room during this conversation. The setting, and I hate to use this word, but it's the only way I can describe it, is the vibe. Sometimes it relies on nostalgia to a specific time period, but it's familiar and or comforting. The set design is critical for making a good hangout movie. Just like how you would focus on the perfect hangout spot, for you and your friends. Most of the blockbuster movies that we see have story elements that are focused on pushing the characters through the plot. That's why sometimes it can feel very cheesy or robotic. Whether it's the unrealistic dialogue or the forced actions and motivations from the characters to get from point A to point B. Introduce character, character as canon event, there's conflict, character goes through trials and tribulations, and then character resolves conflict. And that's not to say that's a bad formula. It's quite literally the basis of storytelling and how we've gotten so many great films in the past. But that's where hangout movies break down the idea of storytelling. In theory, it shouldn't work. But when done right, it can be more effective. And the three directors that I'm going to go over are the big three when it comes to this genre and show us exactly why these movies work and why we love them. Quentin Tarantino, Richard Linklater, and John Hughes. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. John Hughes had one of the most successful three-run stretch of films from 1984 to 1986. Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 
No, this is not the creation of Hangout movies, but it gives us a good starting point into the shift of their popularization. You could add some other works to this list, like Fast Times at Ridgemont High or St. Elmo's Fire, but all of them brought a new type of film to light that has since became a staple in this genre and the industry at large, coming of age. The 1970s are regarded as one of, if not the best decades for film. Movies were heavily narrative-driven, thought-provoking, thrilling, captivating, and all-around monumental works of deep art. Then the vibrant 1980s came around, and we've seen this shift in tone throughout decades over and over, but it's all a balance that creates for amazing, diverse storytelling. 1980s media is very divisive. Some people absolutely hated it at the time, and now it's also revered as its renaissance has created a newfound nostalgic love for it. But it was a huge jump from the seriousness of the 1970s. Yes, there were still films like Raging Bull and Full Metal Jacket that followed the same tone, but the movie theater was dominated by fun, comedic, and overall less serious films. Everyone in the 1980s were just hanging out and the movies reflected that. Contrasted from the heavy adult subject matter, a lot of the movies were centered around younger people or created for them, drawing in a whole new audience to the theater. And no one took advantage of this shift in movie culture more than John Hughes. And while some will argue that there's no depth to these types of films, I think that's because of the childish nature of the stories. Most are about kids in high school. But when we look back at them now, I think they give us a lot more to offer. Relatable, real life subject matter. The perfect hangout movie, in my opinion, gives us the good, the bad, and everything in between. It's not necessarily about life, it is life. It almost feels like these characters live in their own universe and you just happen to be placed there for a day or maybe a week and watch them from the outside. The Breakfast Club is the perfect example of a hangout movie. An ensemble of various characters catered towards different personalities, hanging out in one location for a set period of time as we connect with them through conversation. The first half of the movie is laid back, chill, filled with 80s nostalgia, and allows you to think about what you would do in this situation. You're the sixth member of the group. But what would happen if you actually did stick five people in a room together for eight hours? When you look at someone's life for a day, is it all going to be fun with no deep thought? Most likely, no. Easily one of the best scenes in the movie is after they all get high, they sit in a circle and talk about why they are really here in detention. Not just what they got in trouble for, but what made them the person they are today. What's the motivation behind the character? And a running theme with a lot of these movies is they don't give you the context, the characters tell you the context, but it gives you a whole new reason to connect with these characters. They aren't just these high school archetypes. They are real people with real issues and a story to tell. Hanging out isn't always just surface level, trivial conversation. You and your friends are close because you can talk about things like growing up, your parents, the world around you, and life in general. Now, not all hangout movies get deep like this. Sometimes it is all just surface level conversation, but each of these can be effective in a movie as long as the dialogue is written really well. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. While I was researching and writing this video, I found that so many films could technically be classified as hangout movies because the definition is so loose. Something like American Psycho isn't really a hangout movie, but it's just a character study. That's when I realized that Pulp Fiction, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Hateful Eight, Jackie Brown, and Kinda Death Proof are all by definition hangout movies. But they are some of the best examples in finding out why hangout movies work. The Hateful Eight is a little easier to explain because the entire film is contained in one cabin over the course of a day, but it gets very tricky when you have the non-linear storytelling of Pulp Fiction and Death Proof and the somewhat narrative-driven Jackie Brown. All of these movies don't feel like hanging out necessarily. They're cinematic and also very motivated. But if I asked you what do Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth really do or accomplish during the near three hour runtime of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, there's not much to say. We are looking at each of their lives separately and together as they go throughout their day in 1960s Los Angeles. The movie uses the setting of Hollywood as a driving force for the narrative as it creates the vibe in the story. It could quite literally be about any actor going to work and his stand-in butler filling out his days with side quests, and the story would be practically the exact same. The movie works because of the nostalgic setting and chill hangout vibe that this time creates. But more importantly, it works because of the conversations between the characters. There's a lot of things you can say about Tarantino movies. 
but one thing you can't deny is the uniqueness of his characters and their dialogue. He spends so much time crafting scripts, and every line is meticulously placed, even if it seems like filler. Take the opening to Pulp Fiction, for example. Jules and Vincent are talking about something as inconsequential and mundane as McDonald's, yet somehow it creates for some of the most memorable lines of the movie that have been repeated for decades. It might not teach you anything about the character, but it creates this feeling of familiarity, like you're in the car having this friendly conversation with them. It's something you would talk about while you were hanging out. Now there's so much more that goes into Tarantino's dialogue that I would need a whole separate video to talk about it. His characters love to just talk about life, not the plot which makes it feel less like a movie. But a scene like the opening to Reservoir Dogs achieves something more important to the narrative while being the same type of conversation. While the crew is discussing Madonna's music, the topic of tip culture gets brought up that seems like any other normal human interaction. How much do you tip? Why do you tip? On the surface, it feels like filler everyday dialogue, but it shows us Mr. Pink's worldviews and gives us a glimpse into his personality. He's selfish, especially when it comes to his money. And this is later proven as he tries to run away with some of the diamonds from the heist, leaving behind a dying Mr. White and Mr. Orange. He only thinks about himself in his cut. I bring up Tarantino because he is one of the best, in my opinion, when it comes to dialogue, which is one of the key factors in making the perfect hangout movie. He can set the vibe with a nice setting like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but as you will see, others do that better and more effective. But when all you have is the characters, no real plot arc or mission, the dialogue is what keeps you locked into the movie. And he obviously didn't create this style, even though now many try and emulate his work, but like all of his movies, they are heavily inspired by his favorite films, one of which is what he considers to be the greatest of this subgenre, 1993's Dazed and Confused. The older you do get, the more rules you're gonna try to get you to follow. <laughs> you just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. Quite literally, all of Richard Linklater's films are hangout movies, and he has proven to be a master at this by using setting and character study. Dazed and Confused uses the 1970s, Everybody Wants Some the 1980s, Suburbia 1990s, and then Boyhood the early 2000s. Now you could argue that he uses the setting and era to his advantage and preys upon the nostalgic factor that brings in audiences. People who grew up in that time are instantly drawn in, and like many young people today, this is their glimpse at a time they wish they could have experienced. Linklater would have been 16 during the events of Dazed and Confused, and like most people, we look at our childhood as the best times of our life. The days when everything was simple, the struggles and pressures of the real world didn't affect us yet, and every day was usually spent just hanging out with friends and having fun. But while we are living it, it doesn't feel like that. It's not until we grow up do we glorify that time. He's glorifying the 1970s, from his home state, mind you. So of course it's gonna seem like free-spirited fun, but it's also very realistic. It's not a regurgitated trope-filled recounting, it's a studied and lived through perspective. We might not know if he's telling the truth, but we trust it because it feels honest and sincere. Same with him being in college in the 1980s and his child growing up in the early 2000s. He's a reliable narrator. Now that I think about it, he is literally Mitch from Dazed and Confused. But this is why Suburbia, a movie about teenagers in the 90s, does not work. It is easily his worst film. Maybe that's what the 90s were like, but this barely uses the setting as a driving force. I mean, this movie could be about the 2010s and it would feel practically the same. But the main issue is the characters. They not only feel like tropes and bland archetypes, but they are just not likable. Their struggles and personalities don't feel real. Like honestly, I don't feel for Jeff, he's pretty annoying and kind of immature. Now someone like Randall from Days and Confused or Willoughby from Everybody Wants Some are extremely layered. While Jake and Mitch seem to be the protagonist, they don't really have a goal to accomplish, we just like seeing them navigate the setting. Whereas the aforementioned characters have way more to dissect. They live and think outside the vibe and I believe their impact is because of their relatability. It's something we've all dealt with at this time. What's going to happen after the hangout ends? And that's why I love the ending to Dazed and Confused. Once the sun rises, we have to move on from that magical night and go back to the real world. Just like them, we don't want the movie to end because we want to stay in this feeling. In the last 10 minutes of the film, Randall makes some big decisions and starts thinking about what's next, because the hangout can't last forever. But as relatable as these characters are and how much we can see ourselves in them, we aren't really studying them. The time frame is too short and we don't see enough of them. That's where boyhood comes into play. 
This is the definition of character study as we not only watch Mason, but his family grow up over the course of 12 years. It takes the essence of a hangout movie, but stretches it longer so we can make a deeper connection. There's no mission, no point to get to, there's not even really the best dialogue. But by using a certain nostalgic setting, the early 2000s, we live Mason's life with him. The good, the bad, and everything in between. Now, the critically acclaimed film Moonlight does the exact same thing, but portrays a greater message. It's not just a film about a character going through the years, but it's more about toxic masculinity, sexual identity, and homophobia. Boyhood and The Breakfast Club touch on serious real-life issues, but they don't have the strongest message about them, making Moonlight more effective, but less of a typical hangout. This is when hangout movies can become much more than just a vibe. So I've definitely hammered the point of what is a hangout movie and what makes them so good more than enough in this video. But before we get out of here, I wanna talk about the movies you wouldn't necessarily throw into this category and say so much more. The Florida Project, Do the Right Thing, Lost in Translation, Train Spotting, Perks of Being a Wallflower, Mid 90s, and again, Moonlight. And most of these movies are focused on the coming of age aspect, which inherently comes with a hangout movie territory. They are usually just about a character going through a life change or just going through life. And I use these as examples because by definition, they are hangout movies, but are more about a message. Perks of Being a Wallflower is about a high school kid finding his group and trying to fit in, but is much more about trauma and its effect on a person at that age. Train Spotting is about a group of lowlifes getting high in Scotland, but is really about addiction and how different people handle it. The Florida Project, which actually inspired this video, is about a young single mother trying to make ends meet with her daughter who finds the beauty of life through imagination and friendship. But the end of the movie creates a very serious conversation that has you debating on how you really feel about certain issues. And I think that's what makes a great hangout movie. The majority of the runtime is filled with a cool setting, great colors, maybe some good music, and overall a chill, relaxed tone. But after you've spent some time with these characters and connected with them, the movie brings you the harsh reality, the one everyone tries to avoid by just hanging out, a glimpse into life from a perspective you may have or you may know nothing about, the good, the bad, and everything in between. But what I've found to be the most important of the serious side of hangout movies is Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. The film gives us everything we look for in a hangout movie, good dialogue, a great range of different characters, a good setting as we lay back and watch a day in the life of 1980s Brooklyn. It's the hottest day of the year and we watch Mookie, played by Spike Lee, as he goes about his daily routine in his community of characters. There are many themes of racism sprinkled throughout the film, but they are brought to the forefront at the very intense explosion of an ending as the message becomes more direct. Remember how I said the setting drives the narrative? Well, the heat is the setting. It pushes everything to the edge as it's used metaphorically for the rage building up in the community and society. The ending brings up so many important conversations. It forces you to look at a situation and make a judgment on what you think is right and wrong. But there's so many factors at play and just so much context. And personally, after I watched it for the first time, I was thinking about it for days. Same thing with The Florida Project. There's hangout movies that give you a great experience, but there's ones that also give you an even greater takeaway that makes you think. There's some that allow you not to think at all and just relax. Some make you sad, nostalgic, happy, angry, but the through line that makes them all fall under this category is the connection you make to the film. It's not about the plot, it's about the characters. It's about having a new perspective. It's a glimpse into life. So, what are your favorite Hangout movies? Personally, my top three are Friday, Dazed and Confused, and The Breakfast Club. But then you also have Do the Right Thing, Moonlight, and Lost in Translation. I feel like there needs to be a new subgenre under this category for the ones that are more serious. Maybe we could call it Glimpse into Life Films? Eh, I don't know if that has the best ring to it. But you know what I mean. And I know I probably yapped more than I ever have in this video, but there's just so many movies like these that I could do individual videos for, so I tried to go over as much as I could and also give you as many examples as possible. But I put all of my favorites and also some ones that I didn't talk about into a list over my letterbox if you want some good movie recommendations. The link to my account will be in the description, so make sure to follow me over on there so we can recommend some more films to each other. Maybe I'm being delusional, but I tried to structure this video like the movies I talked about. Chill vibes with nice visuals, just talking, until the end where we got kind of serious with a more deeper sentimental point. 
I don't know, could be just me. I hope you enjoyed the video either way. This was meant to be a laid back video compared to the recent ones I made. Thank you guys for all the love on those, by the way. And yeah, sorry for the wait, but I'm feeling all good now. New videos will be coming soon. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers and we're gonna have to talk about it in a different video because it's, it still doesn't feel real. You guys are the best and I'll see y'all soon.